Nick, I'm honored and I thank you. And, um, you know, I want to say that, uh, uh, you know, I've only got onto this interweb thing here, you know, a, a few months ago, um, uh, talking about the things that's, uh, that are important to me, okay? And, um, <coughs> you know, that you've built up you know, over what looks like, you know, two and a half years, uh, a, 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 a wealth, you know, of information that are, I don't know what I would say, focusing or hinging upon some of the issues that Gary and I uh, were talking about. I just basically <laughs> posted a video to Gary telling him that uh, I didn't really think that he understood money enough to be talking about it, and, um, and I want to leave it there, but I want to talk about some of the things that you raise here. Um, the difference between the government and the markets, the government and the markets. You know, Gary says, you know, he wants to end capitalism, you know, and I say, I don't want to end capitalism. As a matter of fact, I want capitalism. At, my, at least by my understanding of what capitalism ought to be, you know, the free movement of, 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 of money, uh, you know, that people earn because of their wages, that that should be uh, expanded upon, as a matter of fact. Economic democracy you know, is what I'm after, economic democracy. So, um, more free markets. Now, um, the thing that Gary's right about is the interesting, but Gary doesn't seem to understand that, you know, my proposal for government creation of money and providing the money for the means of exchange in the economy, the government providing the money for the means of exchange in the economy, then let the economy be as free as it can be, then you take away the problems of inflation and deflation, and you know and that's the purpose of doing that. And if people read the Chicago Plan for Monetary Reform, and if they read Milton Friedman's uh, framework for um, for economic stability, you know they can see that there's a theme there that goes across progressive and conservative uh, ideologies with regard to having an economy function with quote free money coming into existence. Now, not free money, but free money coming into existence comes into existence without debt. Therefore, it comes into existence without that interest obligation. That that is the key. Okay? That that is the key to, to, to stability. Doesn't deal with population, doesn't deal with corrupt governments, doesn't deal with, you know, a lot of the maladies that are going on out there in the world. All it does is creates a level playing field, a true level playing field. Um, so, so having said that, um, you know, again, <coughs> I'm honored that you think that you, that you think that some part of what I'm saying, you know, is is important, um, and what Gary's saying is important because, in fact, in my video, and I just d did that video just before I I found this video of yours, uh, I said to Gary, probably the reason that I keep going back to him is because he's right about the interest. You see, that's why I keep going back to Gary. He's right about the interest. The interest is the fundamental problem, okay, of the debt money system. That's what debt money, the debt money system is. But Gary doesn't see that, you know. Uh, you know, I think you know if you look at the video that I posted in reply to him, you know, I basically said he doesn't really understand. Uh, he doesn't understand that a it's not the government that's creating the money now he keeps talking about that the government's creating money but it's not okay it's the private bankers that are creating the money they're lending it to the government he, at some points he talks about that he says the government has to you know needs to go in and borrow money for, for its existence and i say that's absurd you know i use wright patman's quote if any if anyone can, using rationale and reason, explain to me why the government, which has the authority and the power to create money, borrows money from somebody else, think about if it was you. If you had the power to create money, would you borrow money from somebody else? He says, but until then, you know, I'm going to keep striving. Wright Patman was one of the heroes, you know, of that era, you know, who understood money. And, um, Milton Friedman was one from another era who understood money, and that era was before he kind of, you know, took the path that led to exclusively free markets and ignoring. Although he didn't, even in his 1970s book, 
uh, uh, Milton Friedman said, "Well, we should have a constitutional amendment about how the go how much money is created." You know, a constitutional amendment really for economic stability. And I say we don't need a constitutional amendment. We already have a constitution. We already have the authority in the federal government to create all the money that we need in the economy instead of the now. Back to the Marxist thing. Um, I, you know, have a couple of times on here, you know, you know, explained the truth of uh, modern Marxism. You know, um, was it Johnson that's at uh, uh, University of Massachusetts Amherst? Um, I'm pretty sure it is, and he's done a very recent, you know, uh, you know, update of the treatise on the fact that historically money supply has grown in relationship to wages. That is to say, wages have grown as a large component of the money supply, and that in the 1970s we got away from that. We're not creating enough wages. Money supply is not going to wages. How is it that the money supply is not going to wages? How does that happen? Answer, the financialization of the economy. Okay. Let's substitute capital for labor whenever we can. A lot of businesses do that because wages, I mean, labor requires wages, requires benefits, requires negotiations, you know, um, and, and which will always happen until we have employees, employee ownership, you know, employee stock ownership, which is, you know, another one of the things Nick that my dad advocated and that I advocate. Um, so, so we can, o you know, we need to overcome that gap. We need to take money from the money supply that's being created in the hundreds of billions of dollars every year, averaging seven hundred billion dollars for the last fifteen years. Think of that, and how much of that money went to wages in the United States of America, American wages, you know. You know, a bunch of it went to corporations so that they could offshore, you know, and paid the wages to whomever, you know, uh, you, you know, mostly the Asians, mostly the East Asians, and not that they shouldn't do things, but we need to use our money system to maintain our standard of living to the best of our ability. To me, that's what a, a nation is all about. So. concept of the village, we're a nation village to me, okay, that's, that's what we are, we're, you know, we're a nation village, but we don't have any identity, you know, because of the corruption, the political corruption that comes about through the money power, that is to say the power of money to corrupt politics, you know, because of that we're a nation that we don't believe in the political system, we don't believe in the government, uh, uh, you know, and that's not me, by the way, you know, I, everybody knows I'm very, you know, askance about giving the government, and the government already has way too much power over my life for me. Thank you. That's my friend Pete. <laughs>